What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to my channel, Mix Fish here, back with a new video. Today's video is going to be all about uh, bogwood. How to sink it, what it's good for, tannins, all sorts of stuff. So I've had a lot of people on Instagram and on YouTube ask me, um, how do you get such a massive bit of uh, bogwood to sink in your tank easily? It's not easy, it's going to take you a while to do, but um, I'm going to run through a few things which is really good about wood and um, how to sink it, basically that sort of thing. But I hope everyone's well. Enjoying the sunshine and stuff, it's really hot at the moment, it's like 30 odd degrees outside. My tank's sort of showing about 28, 29 degrees on here, so um, yeah, the fish are doing all great. Um, they're a bit hot and bothered, but it's just, it's just as it is. It's going to be like that in the Amazon anyway, isn't it? It's going to get really hot in the Amazon, so temperatures go up and down, but it's just, uh, just all part of the hobby, isn't it? Right, anyway, let's start with the video. So, most question I get asked all the time is um, how to sink bobwood. So, um, it depends how big it is really. You see this bit here, this is massive, this bit here. I tried, um, I had both these, this bit here and the other bits in my tank at the moment, in this tank when I first set it up, I don't know if you remember. And then um, they were basically sitting on the top for ages and ages. I had this one sort of sitting there, that one sitting there. And then um, I just personally thought it was too much for my tank. This, this bit of wood here is probably, I don't know, uh, a metre long, something like that, 800 millimetres, something like that. So you can cut them down and do what you like with them. That one there is similar sort of size, but it's bigger. It's got big hiding holes and stuff. Fish can swim through them bits, but um, I prefer the look of that one. So I left that one in there. I took this one out. I'm gonna be banging this one in a koi pond eventually. Sort of, um, so the herons can't get koi and stuff like that. It's quite nice seeing a bit of wood floating on top. But um, yeah, basically how I got it to sink, I took the wood out, I got some fishing line, and I tied, um, I tied some rocks onto it, and um, you can use Engineering bricks. I know a bloke I know. Um, I, work, I actually go. I, I work with him quite a lot on building sites and stuff. And he set his own tank up at the moment. It's a really good idea. I've never actually thought of it. And um, he's, he tied um, three or four engineering bricks into his wood, so you can sort of you can sort of hide them in crevices like this. So as you can see there, you can sort of throw an um, engineering brick in there or a rock or what you like. Throw it in there, and um, it will eventually make the uh, wood sink. You've got to get the, the water to soak into the wood, and it will eventually sink. The bigger the wood, it's not, um, it's not also the bigger the wood, the harder it's going to sink. Um, that wood there, it took about two or three months to sink. But there's a bit of wood down there, which took about two weeks to sink. But I've got a small bit of wood here, which is this sort of size. And that took over four months to sink in the 700 litre tank in the fish room. So it's not all about how big the wood is. It all depends on how porous it is and how much water it's going to soak in, how fast. But um, you can ball little bits of wood. Sort of this sort of size, you can ball them. It will speed up the process. You can um, you can soak them in your bath, but um, your missus or whatever, not be too happy about that. But um, but yeah, the, basically the easiest way I find um, is just get some fishing line. You can even use elastic bands, tie some rocks to it, engineering bricks, something like that. It's the quickest way you're going to get into sink. But um, that's that's the way I've always done it. Just get something, get some rocks on it, get into sink down. It eventually soak up that water. That bit of wood there, if I get hold of it and sort of lift it up, it sort of floats a little bit like that. And then it will eventually go down. So it's compl still completely not sunk. It will take, I don't know, probably another year or so to fully soak up that water. And I tell you what, it's, it's really heavy when it's got a lot of water in it. So be careful you don't damage your tanks lifting them in and stuff. But, um, but that's how basically you're going to get into sink. Next uh, step, I've got my trusty notepad here because I keep forgetting things. And I've got myself a a little pro here as well mate, so uh, yeah, good good evening. Um, but let's get on to the next step, tannins. So tannins, you always will get tannins off wood, okay? Um, I don't know what changed this tank last night. Yesterday morning, the water was probably like 25, 30% darker than that is now, so you always will get tannins, don't worry about that. Tannins aren't bad for a tank, they just look a bit, they just make it look not as clear, crystal clear, but um, it's not a bad thing, you can check your water parameters, it won't do anything. It's actually, it's actually probably quite good for the water because it lowers pH and stuff as well. So um, tannins, best way to get rid of tannins, I find, water changes. So I do like a 60% water change for this tank every week. Um, the older the wood gets, less tannins will come out of it because obviously it's, it's an old bit of wood. Um, what else? You can run carbon in your filters, or your sump, or um, your internal filters. That will help with water clarity and get rid of tannins. Um, but I'm not running any carbon in any of my tanks at the moment because um, it's causing holding, well, like I've done a video on it, it's causing holding head and muskets. But um, yeah, tannins, just 
do water changes, you should get rid of them. Don't worry about it as much. You know, when it comes to like the fifth or sixth day and then the seventh day, it's your water change day. The water's going to look a bit dirty. Don't worry about it. It's just one of them things, you know. It's part of the hobby. So yeah, water changes, best thing for tannins. Another good thing about wood, step number three, is bacteria. I don't know if you can see here, I'll, I'll zoom in for you. So bacteria grows on wood. So I'll show you my bit of wood here. Can you see the green growing on my wood there? So like I said, this wood's been in this tank just over a year now, and you see how much green's growing on it. So you know there's great beneficial bacteria on wood, and um, it all speeds up the process of um, getting a really good mature tank. So wood is great for tanks. I have it in all my tropical tanks. Um, it's great for the plecos and stuff as well. So, But you can see how big this bit of wood is here. Sorry about the, the glare. You see how big that bit of wood is there, and that's... Um, it took me a while to sink that, and there's a little bit there. That's a little bit I was talking about earlier. That took me over like five months to sink, and it's still floating-ish now, so. Yeah, and there's another big bit around the corner there, which I've just sort of wedged up against the side of this one. And that bit of wood there, I can take that out of my tank, and um, it will sink within a day. So, very strange. That wood sort of soaks up water really quickly. But, um, yeah, that's... that's um, that's another really good point about wood. It, um, it holds a lot of beneficial bacteria and it's, it's great for fish, I find anyway. So what we're on now, let's go to step number four we're on now. We're like plecos. So there's a lot of plecos out there, like raw plex, them sort of things. They will actually graze on the wood. So they will eat all the sort of algae off the wood and it's great for plecos. Plecos will absolutely love wood. Um, all sorts of plecos will like bristle nose. So if you've got plecos in the tank, I'm sure a lot of you know this, Put a bit of bogwood in there and they will absolutely love it. Right, right what we're on now, number five, hiding places. So let's zoom back in on the tank again. As you can see, my, uh, my wood here, it's got loads and loads of hiding places. And the blue Akara, who's actually out at the moment, him there, he's always hiding in there from like, the predators and stuff. So as you can see, I've got my Tementis bass, marijuanas. There's a lot of predatory fish in here. And um, if anyone ever gets spooked, they sort of die back in the wood. Um, there's a little smaller clown loach in there as well. They die back in the wood. The bigger predators can't get them. A lot of people message me saying, how do you keep a blue Akara, um, a small dapnoid, um, silver dollars with these like monsters, you know? Like, they, they look at the size of Zarawana compared to my hand. They're huge fish, so the Akara would be like a mouthful for him. He could eat him easily, but he basically hides in the wood. And I've got a small bircher in there somewhere, which, um, it's hiding in there, it's growing up really quick. So yeah, hiding places is a great thing with the, with the wood as well. You can use rocks, but, um, but I, prefer, I prefer the look of wood. But um, yeah, that's basically it about bogwood, guys. I hope there's some um, good knowledge for you about how to sink and stuff. There's, like I said, a lot of you have been messaging me in, um, on uh, Instagram asking me how to get wood to sink. So basic, so simple, tie some rocks to it, leave it in the tank. Every now and then, try it, see how how, um, how much it's floating, and it will eventually sink. It's all about patience, okay? Another thing, when you're tying rocks to your wood, be careful you don't drop sort of the rocks on the floor, you know, because um, it's obviously a glass bottom tank. You don't want to crack the bottom of your tank, so be very careful with that. So make sure they're completely tied on there. And once, you, um, once the wood's completely sunk, sort of cut the, um, cut the fishing line, pull it all out, make sure there's none left in the uh, tank or the elastic bands, because fish can get tied up in it, can end up in your filters, you don't want any of that. You can, might get a mechanical, mechanical breakdown on one of your filters or your sump or something like that. So just be a bit careful. Wave makers as well, they sort of suck it in, so just be really careful for that. But also, I'm gonna do a feed on the video tonight as well. So I've just got some Hakari pellet in there. I don't know if you can see. There's just some floating sticks and uh, some sinking pellet as well. So watch these fish, got absolutely mad. Watch the bass. See the tamensis, they take so hard, and there's a, the mono and the uh, orion takes takes really hard as well. The bass, I've never seen fish take food so hard as peacock bass. Great fish to keep. And obviously the arowanas take food hard, and the oscars look. But yeah, I hope you liked the video. Yeah, I hope everyone has enjoyed the sunshine. And um, yeah, thanks for watching.